Hello everyone. Welcome to our lightning talk on multi-access networking in Kubernetes Edge Cloud. I'm Anurag and I'm with my colleague Sudhir. We'll be talking through the sessions and have a demo at the end. Next slide, please. In this talk, we'll be introducing multi-access edge computing in 5G for IoT devices in enterprise and industrial use cases. 5G is built to connect large number of IoT devices. Some will be intelligent devices and some others will be only sensors. These connections can be over 5G wireless network called NR or a non 3 gpp network such as Wi-Fi. The network traffic and workload requirements will need an agile infrastructure. Openness, now called Smart Edge Open, uses Kubernetes to provide such an agile infrastructure and uses a standard way of extending the platform capability. Cloud network applications that are built on microservices architecture for Kubernetes can benefit from these enhancements, uh, namely orchestration to schedule workload on correct target and networking enhancements to route the traffic to and from the correct application service. Next slide, please. The untrusted non 3 gpp interworking function that integrates uh, 5G core network to Wi-Fi is shown here. This is a control pin interface uh, to the access and mobility management function or AMF over N2. And then there is a user pin interface to the user pin function or UPF over N3. Other enhancements in the wireless LAN side, uh, they are not in focus of our discussion today, so they're not shown here. Next slide, please. To understand the integration of Wi-Fi, let's first look at one of the 5G building blocks in OpenNAS, the application function. It sits on the control plane and interacts with the 3GPP 5G core network in order to provide services, for example, to support the application influence on traffic routing, the access to network exposure function, or the NEF as it's called, interaction with 5G policy framework for policy control. Based on operator deployment, application functions considered to be trusted by the operator, they can be allowed to interact directly with the relevant network functions. If the application function is not allowed by the operator to access directly the trusted network functions, then it can use external exposure functions, such as network exposure function, which we mentioned earlier, to interact with the relevant network functions. The functionality and the purpose of application functions are defined in the relevant TGPP specification. Next slide, please. This slide shows how we integrate N3AWS with AF in openness to provide multi-access edge connectivity. The openness microservices uh, showing integration of network functions then marked here accordingly. With that, I would like to hand over presentation to my colleague Sudhir. Over to you, Sudhir. Thank you, Anurag. This is Sudhir here. So as Anurag explained in this slide about where and what, what is an application function and where N3AWF is present. So this slide shows how the application function talks to the 5G control plane and how the N3AWF talks to the access mobility function and the UPF. Together with N3AWF and 5G and the LTE uh, access to the devices, it, it makes the edge networks a truly multi-access edge computing. So next, let's look into that. What is actually in there in the AF and what it provides? So this openness application function provides APIs for traffic influencing. So it, the openness AF interacts to the UDR, PCF, the policy control function, binding support function, and the session management function of the 5G core networks through the network exposure function. The openness provides a reference network exposure function or it's and also it can work with a third party network exposure function through the traffic influence openness af can influence the traffic steering to the edge locations so the the influence can be based on the traffic information or you can influence about uh, the traffic for a, a single device a group of devices or any devices and you can also have temporal validity which says at what time or duration you want the traffic steering to be enabled and the most important one is a spatial validity condition. So this is where the N3AWF can uh, come into picture. So through the AF, you can tell to the core network which global RAN node ID, whether it is an N3AWF ID or a GNODE ID through which you want to steer the traffic to the edge location. In addition to that, 
openness also provides APS for PFD management or packet flow description management by accessing to the UDR and SMF through the network exposure functions. The PFD helps the UPF to accurately identify an application. Having seen about the AF APS, let us see where AF gets uh, deployed in an openness Kubernetes cluster. The picture on the right side is the Kubernetes control plane where we have the AF microservice running as a pod. And this AF microservice communicates with the uh, network either through the to the, to the network exposure function, which can be the uh, openness reference network exposure function, or it can be a third party network function. And also when you dip from the control plane, when you deploy the uh, entry AWF function, so this picture shows where the entry AWF would be running, it would be running on the worker node. So this entry AWF here, when you deploy it, the, you, you generate an entry AWF ID, which the application function is aware of that. And this, this entry AWF ID is using the traffic steering APIs. So now we have seen how where AF sits and what entry, where entry AWF is there in this location. Let's look how what support the openness KATS cluster provides for deploying an entry AWF pod. So in this picture, you can see here that the entry AWF can be deployed as a cloud native network function. So to deploy the entry AWF for CNF, you need some good capabilities from the edge node, which is features like Multis and SRIOV. So as we know, Multis allows a pod to provide multiple network interfaces, and SRIOV allows you to the capability of it's an, it allows you to have multiple network interfaces for the same NIC. And the next one is a huge pages, which provides the uh, CNF to have uh, uh, to better optimize with the memory management. And then for accelerators for IPsec, you have QAT feature of QAT accelerator support on the openness edge cluster. And to, in order to detect all of this so that your pod is entry AWF pod is placed on the right edge cluster, we need to have we can we the openness edge cluster provides the feature of the node, node function node feature discovery NFT. So having seen AF and entry AWF, I think any presentation would not end with a good demo. So let's look how an entry AWF is deployed on the openness edge cluster. I'll switch over to the demo here. In this demo here, you can see a screen which has three terminals. The left side one is the terminal where the entry AWF would be deployed. The right topmost one is the terminal where a simulated device would be deployed. And the bottommost right terminal is the place where the 5G core network is deployed. So let's start first deploying with the entry AWF network. Okay, here, if you see, I, the pack, you have a reference entry AWF package, so which has the, all the required deployment files. So at this point, we, we do it through the helm, we install the entry AWF, and once the entry AWF is installed, you could see that the entry AWF pod is up and running. So now let's enter, the, enter into the entry AWF pod. This is this is an optional step. You can even do it. Uh, auto, you can automate the starting of the entry AWF uh, containers within the entry AWF containers. So here. We have uh, we are first starting the high performance data plane, which is based on Fedos VPP. And then, so it shows what are the interfaces which gets created. We have two uh, virtual functions here. And then, now let's switch over to the starting of the uh, control plane, 5G control plane. This is uh, based on a uh, open source 5G network called as Free 5GC. Okay, so now let me start the control plane on the entry AWF side. So now the entry AWF control plane is up. Okay, and if you see, it's already made a connection with the 5G, 5G network. Meanwhile, let me start the UE. So rightmost window shows the UE part here. Let me first trigger the, before triggering the UE registration, let me do a ping to see if the networks are reachable. So I, I'm doing a ping and the network is reachable here. I'll, uh, so now I've done the registration. At this point, if you see the UE is successfully registered with the 5G core. OK, now I'm establishing a PDU connection, a data connection with the 5G core network. And then I'll send some data to the 5G network. So this is a ping data which I'm sending, which is going to the 5G network. And after the ping data part, I'll release the data connection and then trigger the UED registration. So at this point, uh, I'm terminating the UE part here. So this demo shows for you how the entry AWF is deployed on openness edge cluster, and we could have a simulated UE and with the 5G network, how uh, how we could and simulated UE and the 5G network, a demonstration of the entry AWF running on the openness edge cluster.